Hey, hey, hey. How's it going, everyone? So, I thought I would pop on. It's like 2 a.m. <laughs> I'm looking pretty ratchet in my pajamas. <laughs> but anyways, I needed a break because... Excuse me, I have a cough drop in my mouth. Hopefully I don't sound like I'm slurping. <laughs> okay, anyways, I needed a break because I'm doing details on this book that's never ending. Oh my god. I said I wasn't going to make it huge and it's ginormous and I'm stressing out. But anyways, I need to take a break. So I thought we would get on and talk about um, tea bags. <laughs> Tea bags and art. Using tea bags and art. I've been using tea bags and art for a long time in my art journal. Um, before I started making junk journals or anything, um, before I started using decoupaging tissue paper and stuff like that, I would use tea bags. And um, I know a lot of people do this, so it's not anything I made up, clearly. <laughs> but it's just really fun. And so the first thing, we'll start with basics. And this is um, part of our Crafting to Cope series, I guess you could say series I don't know <laughs> but um if you didn't see the first video it's my last video if you want to go check it out which is just basically crafting um crafting to relieve stress um I'm calling it crafting to cope because a lot of people right now need um easy things that they can do um to get artsy and people that like junk journaling or art journaling or collaging doing mixed media projects just whatever just stuff that little things that I like to do that don't take a lot of brain work um, and that just really relieves stress for me. So this is something you can do for your journal. We're going to pull out our spooky journal that is a story, and we're going to do a piece in there, and a really quick one. I already started it, so it could be fast. But we're just going to talk about tea bags and art and how we can use them. Um, so the first thing is the tea bag itself. So let me just show you different ways to color your tea bags. Now, you can leave your tea bags. These are just plain, the cheap tea bags from Aldi's. Um, and actually there are two different kinds, a few different kinds. I have some that I've already made. I have a ton of them actually around here, but these are just the newest ones I got. They're a lot smaller. Um, I thought it was the same tea, but I thought they were the, I have glue under my nails. Oh my gosh, it's so gross. <laughs> so please don't mind my hands. I'm sorry. I put on these glue on nails because I didn't get to get, do my nails like acrylic <laughs> and they're just ratchet. <laughs> they're ratchet. I'm sorry. Okay. Get over yourself and get on. Okay, so these ones were a lot smaller. Um, I, I grabbed this box from, it's called Benner, I think it's Benner Tea Company. It's the Aldi's brand. And this is the, I thought it was the regular tea bags that I usually get that are like this size. But this is the black tea bags and they are different because they're smaller and also they're not individually wrapped, which doesn't matter to me, it's just less work. But they are quite a bit smaller you can see the size. This is the regular tea and this is the black tea bag, but that's it's all fine for me. I usually tear them up and stuff. But okay, so what if, so these are coffee dyed. Let me just go through this. These are coffee dyed, or not coffee dyed, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. These are tea dyed from the tea. <laughs> Did I say it was 2 a.m.? Yeah. So these are tea, tea dyed from the tea. So there's different ways you can do it. You can you know, get I get a big old, um, I put on my tea kettle and I just get a big old bowl and I usually just throw in like 10 at a time, <clears throat> 10 to 15, and I let them sit and steep for a while because I like richer color, but you can do it. Sometimes when I, when I make my cup of tea, I'll just take the tea bags out, obviously before I put any, you know, almond milk or whatever in it, and um, I just let them sit out and dry, and I like to turn them every couple hours if I'm in the kitchen and you know I see them on the plate I put them on a plate and I turn them over it helps them dry faster so if you don't have time to sit there and like actually make the tea bags like that there's other ways you can color your tea like if you want a tea, couple tea bags on the fly that's what I want to talk about real quick um, and I'm sure this isn't rocket science I'm sure you probably have thought this up if you do tea bags <laughs> but um, I just want to show you some really good products that I like to use to m color my tea bags instantly and not have any dry time as well alcoholic is a perfect solution for this um, you have to experiment with colors you know you can do different colors I mean it doesn't even have to be browns like a tea color you can do any color you want you can use watercolors you can do anything on these so just to color the tea bag like a tea color if we're not 
actually making the tea. Let's try to achieve that. So I have, uh, you know, just this little felt piece for this. Um, and I'm going to start out with this one. This is cinnamon. And um, cinnamon is actually a lighter color in the Marabou line. It's lighter than their ginger, I think. And then there's vanilla. Vanilla is really light. But sometimes I like to mix these two and it comes out a pretty cool color. Um, this is good if you want to decoupage this and you want it to be more see-through and less, like, not as dark. The vanilla is a really good color with some of this. So let's start out with cinnamon and just see. And so all I do is you can put it directly on your pad and then smear it on. Or you can just drop it on. I mean, oh, and I meant to move my, um, you know what, hopefully this doesn't add a glare. Yeah, I am going to, I think I'm going to move, see if I can move. Sorry guys, I'm not very prepared. I, let me see how much of a glare, because if you can see all the dye on this um, mat, it's because of my alcohol inks. And I'm trying not to, let me see how bad the glare is. Well, through the screen it does, oh yeah, it's really bad right here. Hmm. Well, it's just for a moment. Hopefully you guys can forgive me just for a moment. I really don't want to dye it up anymore, so let me see if I can put a piece of paper right there. Maybe that will help. Okay, we're just, it won't be long. I'm sorry about the glare, it won't be long, but we're just going to dye these up real quick, so, um, so that it's easier to clean up. So I'm just going to smear this on, plus the glass helps it move around a little faster. And, okay, so clearly that's not working very good, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to put it directly on this, and then I have alcohol. So I'm going to spray the alcohol on, and I'm just going to move it around. There we go. And you see, you get a really quick color. It's nice to do it on this glass mat because, um, you know, stuff gets underneath and you can smear it around a lot easier. Yeah. And then, so I'm liking that color. And this is the cinnamon. So I'm just going to squirt some more. Squirt some of my alcohol ink. <laughs> and see, just kind of rub it around in there. And this is just a really quick way to get color onto your tea bag. So, <clears throat> and it literally dries in seconds. That's what I like about it the most. So, if I don't have any tea bags made up and I want to use one, look at that. Cinnamon is a perfect color to get some tea-like color. And of course, you can vary this if that's not dark enough. You can make it darker. You can go in with two different colors if you want. And this is vanilla. Now, this is a lighter color, but if you want. You know, just variations of color. Obviously, you can do stuff like that. And then I'll, I also have a couple darker colors. I really like this. Um, oh, goodness, I'm a mess. <laughs> uh, this resin tint, it, resin t ice resin tint. If you have this, it's if you look at the ingredients, they're word for word um, exactly the same ingredients as alcohol ink, as the Ranger alcohol ink. They're identical. Um, literally all of them ethanol um, propylene glycol it's all the same stuff so um, that's all it is is alcohol ink it even smells like alcohol so ice resin tint is just alcohol <laughs> does the same thing so if you want to do darker or just variations of color it doesn't have to look like it actually was steeped but if you want to just add some alcohol and it helps move it around and then you can get some different colors. Like the other one was a little more yellow, but I just, this color is called a Ancient Root, and it's the color I really like to use for my, um, if I can grab it here, maybe not. Okay, too much time spent already. Um, on my, when I, when I try to make my, um, what am I trying to say? My tape. My, um, I can't talk right now. <laughs> I can't talk. <laughs> I try to make my tape that looks, um, antique. You know, like old tape, um, that Nick the Booksmith put out that video and, um, that she learned from a subscriber gave her the idea to color scotch tape with alcohol ink to make it look like old tape. You know when tape's been in a book for a long time, like a, for a ripped page and it starts turning yellow? Anyways, I use this color on it. I can't, I don't know why that was so hard to get out. <laughs> I'm having a rough time. I think that, um, 
uh, project I'm doing is just really stressing me out. It's just never ending, and yeah. I had to fix my sewing machine, so now I'm like behind, but it's at least it's fixed. So look how pretty that is. Oh. So this is perfect, crafting to cope. I'm like releasing stress. I love playing and getting my hands dirty, and look how beautiful that looks. And it's dry in like two seconds. So sometimes I prefer this look, depending on what I'm doing. So this is the alcohol ink, and then this is just regular. And of course, whatever kind of tea that you use is gonna be you know, different. So let's go ahead and clean this mess up. We'll get moving. <laughs> so yeah, it's just different ways to color it, but you can color your tea bags whatever you want. And I'm just going to wipe this up really quick. And then get this glare out of your face. <laughs> okay, let's get my dirty mat back on. My stained mat. Oops. Oh goodness. Okay, so... So some things I love to do with tea bags, I love using them in art journals, and I'm going to, of course, I always provide you with links to awesome people. I'm going to link some great videos for a couple of particular mixed media artists, well, at least one, who does, like, exclusively tea bag stuff, and um, she's just really, really amazing. And I've done, gotten a lot of in inspiration from her, she's so great. Um, but anyways, so... One thing I like to do is stamp on them. You can stamp and watercolor. No. I don't have my real watercolors out, but I have my Zig watercolor brushes out, and we can just show you how. Like this is a waterproof ink, of course. It's um, what? What do I use? Archival ink and. You can just get out a couple of colors and color this baby up. Now, I'm not even trying to color nicely or anything. I'm just grabbing two colors. I just want to show you how color lays down. Let's see. I don't know which is darker. <laughs> okay, this one is darker. All right. So just, yeah, so you can just color on it. And it, because it, it, it does have like that, it's almost like a fabric, you know, it's, it will spread, the ink will spread, um, but it's, you know, it gives it that look, it, a look, an artsy look, you know, I like things to not look perfect, and that's my excuse to not have to try to be perfect, of course, but, <laughs> but I like that, you know, artsy look that's not super perfect and then I like to go in with a well now it's all wet but I like to go in with my I like to do my outlining even though I stamped on it with this t uh, Tombow pen um, it's a cal calligraphy pen but it's super super waterproof and um, really permanent and great I love it so I will I would after I color it I'll go around it and um, you know like define it more kind of separate these colors and of course, I don't have my glasses on, so this is not happening. Oh. <laughs> Can it be done? So we, we're not going to sit here and color this whole thing. I'm just going to show you <clears throat> that you can paint on here. And this is just a rough... See how it's bleeding out? So if you don't want that to happen, you would stop before you get to the line. I didn't have my glasses on. Um, but yeah, you would stop before you get to the line, kind of like when you use um, permanent markers, uh, alcohol markers, and, you know, how it spreads in the, in the, on the page. <clears throat> but yeah, these are kind of dried out a bit. These are pretty old. So, But yeah, that's all. You just kind of go over it. And then you can go detail it with some pencils if you want. And, yeah, this is looking pretty bad, so I'm going to just show you. I was just showing you how the color does go down on it. And you'll see more of it in our little book I did a little bit, which came out a disaster as well. But I actually switched the colors around. I meant to do dark underneath. <laughs> Look at me. Oh, I'm two for two here. Okay, so anyways, <laughs> train wreck. But yeah, so you would just go over very carefully. See, when it's wet like this, you don't want it. Like right now, it's wet, and I almost tore it. But you, you know, go over your your lines. 
when it's dry, not right now, with your permanent marker and, you know, outline it and kind of define those pretty lines. So, so you can do that. <laughs> it's like a monstrosity. Um, I love the Zig water brush markers. They're nice. Or whatever they're called. Okay. So that's one thing you can do. And decoupaging is really fun. Now, I showed you guys in the last video, I think, a sneak peek of what we're going to do. But I have to get this sewn into that book. <sighs> so, um, I wanted to show you. I love using it in art journals on beautiful coffee dyed paper. And I like to do little peekaboo pages and um, I just think it's really fun. So I just took a punch and punched out a couple circles together, kind of made it look, you know, just like an opening. You can use a punch or you can cut it with your, um, I said scalpel, razor, whatever. <laughs> and yeah, and then decoupage the tea bag on top and I held in some pressed flowers. Those are real pressed flowers in there. So you can see it on both sides. So it does really good for that. And it just has a really fun texture. It's really, really cool. You can also just take your pressed flowers and put your tea bag down like this. Um, Mod Podge it. And then take your pressed flower. Put it in there. Which I did this already in one of the other pages in my journal, but I don't know where it is. But then you just would put it in there like that. And then... Um, yeah, then you would just cover it up and like you could put a, an arrangement and then Mod Podge on top of that and when it dries you can sew around it and it looks really really beautiful. And now of course I want to find that for you and <laughs> show you. I'm not very prepared. I kind of turned the camera on just kind of spur of the moment but I think it's in here. I do want to show you. Okay, let's see. Since I have it next to me, it's right here. Okay, so here's a perfect example of what I was trying to explain. Um, this is just a pressed flower in between two tea bags. Um, two pressed flowers, because that's, yeah, that one and that one. And then I just cut out this butterfly out of a magazine or something. And, yeah, and then I sewed around it. And it's really, it feels really cool. It looks kind of cool. And you could just stick this in a pocket stick this on a card or something. So yeah, it's really, really fun to do, and it turns out really good. Um, you could put pictures inside of tea bags and do the same thing for junk journals. Anything. Sky's the limit, right? You can stamp. This is one of the stamped images. Oh yeah, we talked about stamping, but this is a another image that I watercolored. So you can do that. This is on a white tea bag, so you don't have to have a colored tea bag for it to be cool. And then if you decoupage this down, um, remember if you're going to decoupage, obviously I would paint it if it's going to be with watercolors after because that might run when you decoupage. It will run if it's water soluble. But if you use permanent or India ink, like the Faber Castell markers, that wouldn't run. You could just everything around it would disappear so it would just decoupage on just like that um yeah so just fun things you can do and they add really good textures to backgrounds i love how this came out look at all that beautiful separation from those colors i love i love that alcohol so again in case you didn't catch that um that was vanilla marabou and cinnamon so, and then the ancient root. Okay, so the last thing is, let me, oh, let me put this back. Okay, um, now I forgot. We're just going to take our little book out again. So if you didn't see the last video, we started this little book just for fun, just a little journal. And this is um, also covered in tea bags. I did it a, a tab journal here, and that's just tea bags on the back, and it gives it a really cool feeling. I love the way it feels on the front and back. And then um, this is about uh, this Dr. Medill, who is a really evil doctor, and um, he worked in this hospital. I'm going to say this really quick because I'm sure you guys already heard the story if you watched the other video. <laughs> um, so he's an evil doctor. He has a creepy hospital. This is RJ. RJ um, 
is an aspiring writer, journalist. He works in for the Detroit paper. He lost his parents at a very, very young age. His parents were amazing. Oh, you look at all the glue up there. I'm going to have to take care of that or put something there. I just now saw it in the reflection. <laughs> but see, this is what I'm just cutting myself off just to tell you. This is what I'm talking about not being perfect. Like in the last video I was talking about. You don't have to be perfect if you're just trying to put stuff down on paper to feel, you know, to relaxed. You don't have to worry about stuff like that. I'm not worried about it. This is my personal thing, but I went a little crazy with it. But we're not going to stress about that. <laughs> my OCD's kicking in. So RJ was an aspiring writer. He lost his parents at a young age. Um, so the story goes that RJ's parents, they own a morgue actually, and um, they noticed that some of the bodies that were coming in, or a lot of the bodies that were coming in, were coming from the same doctor, this doctor. And this doctor is, a, you know, a creep. And actually his mother, RJ's mother, which is her, she used to work for him. And she remembered that he something didn't seem right about him. And she actually quit the job as a nurse way back when because she got bad vibes. So the bodies were not stopping. And um, he just seemed untouchable, that doctor. You know, like nothing could happen to him. So they went undercover, and she knew all the places to look in the hospital and had all these great ideas, and there's so many more details I'm writing in the story, but to keep it kind of short, <laughs> um, they go on this adventure trying to hunt this, you know, like, get this guy caught, and they get right there, and they are about to expose him, and the worst thing ever happens. Um, he finds out, and he's on to them, but you, we don't know until it happens, Right when he finds out, or right when we know in the story that he knows, he ends up murdering them. And how he does it, and that's what we're going to get into this. So, um, so this is RJ, and this is, you know, his typewriter. It's just to represent, I'm telling a story in the book through pictures, okay? So, uh, or through art, whatever. So, um, that's his name. It kind of seals the deal here about what he does and how he's a young man and how he is a writer and um, it says took the only thing he ever loved things are not what they seem and I'm gonna leave this open because I might tell some of the story on it or type something out I don't know but I turned to this page and I did some of this now you guys are gonna be like what is that <laughs> that's a monstrosity but I love it it looks like a little kid did it and that's what I love but anyways um, so this is going to be the, the part about his parents, just to give the background. And so up here, I just did a rub on. It says, um, the pharmacy in Detroit, Michigan. And this is a big part of the story here. Because this says, take three capsules, blah, 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 blah. And so what this is, is this is the prescription that killed them. See, they had caught the flu. And that doctor had called in their prescription. He knew that they were sick and they were being seen by somebody else in his hospital, and he actually called in a prescription for them, and he put cyanide in the pills. So, that's how they passed away so unexpectedly. And RJ never knew what happened. He just thought they were they died from the sickness. But later on in the story, he, they're going to come to RJ as apparitions, and they're gonna. He's not going to be able to hear them, so they're going to leave him tons of clues, and he's going to go on his own hunt to figure out what's happened to his mom and dad and it's going to be great. He's going to expose the doctor and all the good things that we want to happen are going to happen. <laughs> so don't worry, they do get justice. Um, so, so anyways, I put tea bags in the background here and all I did for this is I had a really nice inked background. So I just took a plain tea bag like this and I open it. By the way, I was going to show you this real quick. So, how do you open your tea bags? I know I'm all over the place. You guys know me at 2 in the morning. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, it's one of those nights. But, um, so, if you want to preserve the whole entire tea bag and it has a staple, you just pull the staple apart, obviously, like this. Just pull it apart and carefully and... Just take it out carefully. I don't ever do this, by the way. I just usually cut the top off because I don't care about it. <laughs> but there might be a reason, like, um, okay, so in my newest journal, I'm actually taking a tea bag apart like this and filling it up with something that smells good, um, some cornflower seeds, actually, and then I'm going to put it back together in its original form. 
And so you can do stuff like that too. Use it as like a, a potpourri holder um, that represents tea, you know? So in that case, you'd want to leave it intact fully like this and you wouldn't want to cut it. So then after you do that, you take your little mini staple out, you have this, and obviously you just empty this, which I have a garbage can. I'm just going to dump it all out. And you would just do, dump it all out. <laughs> you would just do that. And then you could just fill it up with something and then, you know, fold it back together the way it was. And that would take a little bit of practice, but it would just go something like that. And then if you keep your, I always keep my strings, and you can just staple that with a mini stapler, just like that, and it would look just like the tea bag. Isn't that cool? I mean, it's not rocket science, but, you know. So anyways, I'm gonna, I took, for this background, I took a tea bag, opened it up, left it white, because I wanted it to disappear in the background, kind of, and I just did some easy background stamping. And I just took this one, I'll just do a little stamp in here. I am so unorganized. It's unreal. I had everything cleaned and nice, and now I can't find anything. So I'll get this stamp out here. Oh, it's right in front of my face. Okay. So, so you can just take, I would start with this one. Nope. This one. And just do like a background. See, I did that, so it's just like a newsprint, and then I just went over it with, like this. I got my old school wood stamps out. So, yeah, it came out a little better on there, thank God, but <laughs> something like that. So you can just use, you can stamp whatever you want that came out a mess, actually, but you get the point. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I should probably re-record this, but I really don't want to. Um, yeah, it does work, and it works beautifully, as you can tell. I think it came out really good on here. I don't know what's wrong with me tonight, but... So anyways, we're just gonna... That was the background. I just tore it up and um, decoupaged it on with Mod Podge, which is just Mod Podge first, and then the pieces of you know, tissue down and then let it dry. So then I'm just going to put these guys on there and I'm probably going to do a little collage so we'll add some of that. I have the arsenic because that's what brought them to their death, unfortunately. And um, there was another one I had too. Let me see. I just am not, I don't know, I feel like I'm losing everything. <laughs> I think I might have knocked it over, so let me see. This, and I can't remember what else I wanted to put under there. I want to put the rest in peace. Huh. So I'm not putting much on there, as you can tell. I'm just going to put a couple of things. And then maybe a, uh, some words. There was a couple other stickers I, or pieces of ephemera, but for the sake of me not dragging, but for this video, I'm just going to glue this down, <laughs> just so we have a little finished piece in here, and I'm just going to get my uh, black ink, I think I want to use, and black soot. So you don't always have to put a ton of stuff on the page, you know? I mean, it looks like a lot, but really, it's just these two things, you know? The rest is just the background. So... It's already a very busy background, so I'm not going to put a bunch of stuff on top of it. I'm just putting these two pieces just to tell my story. So I want to put the beautiful parents and then how they met their their death so that we know what's going on. And I'm just going to outline that to see it better. And then I'm also going to outline them in dark so that we can see them so that they pop off a little bit better. I actually should have used brown. I think brown would have looked cooler because I already have a lot of dark black on the page. But this is what I had in my hand. Oh, it looks pretty cool. And I roughed them up around the edges with my distressor, because I do that to everything. <laughs> I just like the way it looks. Like torn edges. 
So very simple. You don't have to get crazy. Oops. Oh, sorry, sweetie. Oh, <laughs> I rubbed it all over her face. Ah, she, I love this picture. I when I first saw these Tim Holtz pictures, this is the first picture I pulled out, and I was like, I gotta do something. And they're also in the Christmas. Um, this couple is also in the Christmas one and the Halloween one. <laughs> And I, I love them. I pulled this one from the Christmas one because it was next to me, but, you know, I did the same for the Halloween one. So, yep, I'm just going to glue them down. And I had some, like I said, I had some other stuff to put under here, but we're just going to glue that down because it's, who cares? <laughs> just, just do the next part in our story. Really quick stuff. So if you wanted to do this for, to relax, work with tea bags to relax, you can, if you're into mass making, so I don't know if you watch, um, is it Shabby Dabby Doo Dah who does the mask makes? I'm probably getting it all wrong. Um, who's the other person? There's a few people who do mask making for junk journals. Um, and I think that would be a cool thing to do is just sit down with a bunch of tea bags and color them, dye them, or, what, you know, if you're doing it with alcohol ink, um, and then you can stamp on them or make little pieces and just do a bunch of them in a row and put like have like a little plastic container or something that you keep them in that you can pull out of um, for when you do your journals. So just like a mass make of tea bag art. <laughs> I think that would be fun. Okay. And then we're going to add a little sentiment, as I always say. Once I find my stickers, here they are. And then we'll put... Just find something that works out of this Tim Holtz book because I'm trying to use up the stuff that I buy and never use. And that's kind of what I made this journal for. Just a fast, something that I can be creative in and not think too hard, especially when I'm having a rough day and I just want to do something for myself. Um, I can't get the sticker off. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm not worried about anybody judging me on it. It's not my best work. It's just something for me to relax and do what I want to do, you know. I really can't get the sticker off. What is the deal? I've never had one problem with these stickers. And then as soon as I start filming, it's like ridiculous. What is your problem? Okay, well, we're going to have to do some cutting here. Sorry about this. <laughs> It knows that I'm filming. Okay. So I just picked out an unfortunate ending. And I'll probably just put that under here just to tell my story. Just inking around it, mostly on my fingers. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Good thing I'm not getting graded on this. Um... And I actually was thinking about getting this, if it has any more ink on it, and kind of yellowing this up. This had the alcohol ink on it. Maybe I can activate it and put some of that color, yeah, there we go, onto this. Yeah, there we go. So I just kind of put some of that alcohol ink on there to color it up a little bit, and we'll just glue that on. Simple stuff. And then I'll tell you about this craziness over here. <laughs> so that was a stamp gone wrong. And I stamped a tea bag, put it on there, and then it had all disappeared, even though I used waterproof ink. Um, and so then I tried to look at the picture of the stamp, and I can't draw. So by the way, I tell my kids not to say I can't. I don't draw. I just, I'm not. Yeah, I can't. I really can't. <laughs> I'm not a, I can't draw. So I was just like looking at it, trying to draw the sun, and it just, look at this. It was not working out. But um, I think it's fun. It's still kind of fun. You can see it up close. It's still kind of fun. Um, I like how it looks all sketchy and like, like maybe he drew this in his journal or something. I don't know. And it says, I'll be watching over you. Because I like to add, even though it's a serious thing, I like to add humor and all my stuff, so... All my, like, Halloween, no, this isn't Halloween per se, but anything that's, like, spooky to me when I do stories, because I love storytelling, I was telling you guys about that, um, I love to add humor 
for some reason I feel like scary and funny go together really good. So this seemed like a really serious story and it got a little too serious for me so I was like I might try to add some humor into this book later on telling some of the other stories because I'm going to add some more ghosts in there maybe maybe a funny nurse or something um, I already had some ideas so anyways I was thinking about adding this guy on there so just another element oops and I just look at that I just grabbed the glue Fear not. Okay, and then we're just all we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to decoupage the um, flowers down here so you can do the peekaboo thing or see how I do it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna glue this guy in there because I like him. This cool moon. I feel like they're talking. The owl and the uh, oops, and the moon about what happened. To this couple so this is the grave right here like a headstone and so I just cut with my knife my craft knife a very uneven square and um, I just took a tea bag and I decoupaged it on this side and I just put the glue around the edges Mod Podge and so as you can see you have the rest oops sorry <laughs> I'm like flicking you off you have the rest right here but all around the edges it's glued and then that's going to become more transparent when we put our glue on. So I just have a couple of dried flowers here that actually one of them is kind of ripped apart, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do is it's a little tricky when it's in a book. So I'm going to take a uh, stamp and I'm going to prop this up. Uh, let me see, make sure there's nothing on there. Okay. I'm just going to prop that up just so that it doesn't seep through. And then I'm just going to get my Mod Podge out. Regular old Mod Podge. You can use whatever you want. And I'm just going to glue it up. Oh, let me find a tea bag first. <laughs> Which one do I want to use? So I have some lighter ones over here. I think I'm going to use a light one for the front. I have a whole bag of different shades. Like darker, lighter. I love this one, so I'm going to go with this one. And I'm not worried about the size because I just tear the edge off like this. Because I can cut it, you know, down here. So, And I'll just start it there. I might tear the edge a little bit on this one. It's a little bit wide. There we go. Just like that. And I guess I'll make this one a little more uneven. There we go. Oops. Oh my gosh, did I just wreck that? <laughs> nope. It's fine. So, hopefully you guys can see that, okay? So, all I'm going to do is get my flowers kind of ready. And I think I'm going to use... Oh, this one just broke again. Man, they're so delicate. So, I was going to do something like this and just... This is a funky one, and it's my least pretty one, and that's why I'm using it, because I just didn't want super fancy for this. It's my personal thing, so. Plus, I like the colors. I was thinking about doing that, and then I had another petal over here somewhere, but I must have lost it, of course. That's fine. <laughs> just something like that. Just making sure it fits. And I'm just going to take this out. And then I'm just going to glue it up. Very easy. I'm going to go all the way over here. That's way too much. That was... <laughs> what am I thinking? <laughs> Please. Girl. <laughs> Get it together. Alright. So, you don't need this much glue. This is insane. I don't know what I'm doing. Or why I'm doing that, why I continued using that much, but... Oh my god, look at... <laughs> oh my god, what not to do. <laughs> this is a what not to do video, didn't I tell you that? <laughs> oh my 
gosh. Okay. I swear I've done this before. I have. I'm just dropping these in. It's already a train wreck, so I'm not worried about it. Oh man, that's horrible. Okay, that's just ratchet looking, but it's okay. And then for this part, I'm actually just going to be very gent careful. And I am going to use a lot, uh, you know, more than I usually would on top, just to make sure it's adhered. And also because I want to see it through the um, tea bag. Okay, that's crazy, but... Alright, and then I'm just going to put a little more on the edges here. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of put some on this. I'm just letting it go on my hand. Just a little, like that. Just lightly brush it, just to kind of make sure it's on there good. And I'm just going to drop it on. Now, it dries clear, but I did put a lot in there, so I'm not sure how that's going to come out, to be honest. But every one that I've done so far, and I've been doing this a long time, always dries clear, but I never use this much glue. <laughs> so I don't really know how it's going to come out. But I'm not stressing, because it's okay. I almost said sadate, because it's okay. Anybody know what movie I'm talking about? But I don't know what I do. Alright, here we go. Yeah, and obviously if you get your wet medium on watercolor, it's gonna run. <laughs> but that's okay. So that's it. And then when this dries, you can just cut this off. No big deal. I wanted it wrinkly around the edges, so I kind of did that on purpose, believe it or not. I like that look for this. And that looks crazy right now, but it's going to dry just like the other flowers that I showed you. It should dry just like this. So, as you can tell, that's the same exact process I did for this, and it came out perfect. So, that came out really beautiful, I thought. So, this is just an idea of something you can do for an art journal page. Uh, or, you know, whatever. So obviously we're not going to sit here and wait for it to dry, but there's our little piece, and I think I'm going to put, I'm going to cover my Mod Podge and put one more little sentiment over here, and that's going to be our little story. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. Pretty artsy-fartsy looking. And I'm going to put a rub-on, which is just one of these little rub-on things. I'm going to put rest in peace, and where am I going to put it? Hmm. I was going to put it up here, but now my guy's right there, so I might I might just put it on the side right there just to be different. Why not? Or you know what? I think I'm going to put it down here when it dries. Rest in peace. Or maybe right there. But this isn't dry yet, so it won't rub on. So it's going to look like this. I'm just going to take it peel it off and then I'm going to scratch it on to there and it's going to say rest in peace and then I might go around here and try to fix my owl <laughs> maybe give him some eyes <laughs> try to define that picture a little bit more but there you go I mean this doesn't get more beginner friendly than this um, I'm sure you, you guys can create something beautiful <laughs> but this is just something fun I didn't really have to think about it and I love using tea bags they're really really fun so this is our little book so far, and um, I hope you guys are doing something like this, and or maybe in a tab journal with me, or trying out these little techniques like collage and um, tea bag art stuff like that. So go get some tea bags and have fun. <laughs> Do a better job than I did. <laughs> I just wanted an excuse to pop on and say hi, and. Hope you guys are having a really, really good night or day, whatever time you're watching this. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, if you're still watching, um, I did pick two winners for those books. Uh, if you watched the last video, two people that commented. Um, I contacted you both already, so if 
I will put your names in the description. So um, look in the description box and my email's there if you're just now seeing this. And I will send you one of those little books um, for the write and release ritual. So thank you so much again and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!